The kids can go downstairs at this time. We are resuming Sunday school, which is awesome. It's set up pretty cool downstairs. Thank you guys so much for doing the Sunday school. Um, it's all spread out down there. Each child is at like, the end of an eight-foot table. It's, they all have their own craft items, their own everything down there, supplies. It's really a pretty neat setup. You're welcome to go down and check it out um, afterwards. If you have the bulletin, you'll know a couple of scriptures um, that are in there. You're going to want to open your Bibles to Romans 1.16. There's a little correction in your bulletin. in 2 Corinthians 5.18-21, through 21, and then 1 Corinthians 9.22. There's some other scriptures, too, that you're going to want to jot down. You're going to want to read these again later. We're just going to work these other scriptures um, into the messages as we move forward. So we're going off of a really powerful week. Okay, Holy Week was last week. Um, just finished. We had the, the sunrise service that started everything off down by the, uh, the Black River. We had uh, a couple of guitar players. We had some music. It was a really good uh, sunrise service down there. Powerful, powerful time. Then we had the traditional service um, at 9.30 last week. We sang the very traditional um, Easter hymns on the organ. Powerful morning. Um, then, of course, this modern um, the second service here, the 11 o'clock service, we had a really nice crowd, we had baptisms, we had um, new people joining the church, we had communion, undefeated, let us in music. Um, it was just a powerful, powerful morning. Um, I was able to speak to many of you after church, and many other people throughout the week, and people online, and um, calls, and texts, and all the different ways we can contact each other now, but I talked to a lot of people and uh, there really seems to be something happening. It's, it's pretty exciting. I talked to so many people who, who say that they're chasing after God more than ever right now. For whatever it is, they just feel like they're closer to God. They're, they're searching more. They're seeking more. And people are telling me, I, I want to know a way to plug in. Like, what do I do with this now that I have this? I don't know what to do with it. And so this week and next week, um, we're going to tweak the messages a little bit just to answer some of these questions and to give us some um, boldness and give us some ideas on, on what we can take with what we've been learning. Like, we've been in this long series before Easter on stop trying and start training. Training in God's Word. And now people are, are training and they're, they're getting this stuff. God's Word, truth. And they want to be able to plug in. They want to be able to do something with it. Um, they want to be able to know God more. We've talked a lot about this. It's not no more um, dates and names and that sort of stuff, but it's, I want to get to know Him. I really want to know more. Now that I have it, I'm craving more. And then I want to share what I have with others. And that's what I'm hearing so many of you say, so many online. So um, we are going to be doing it this way. Um, that's what these messages are. Real quickly, starting today, we're no longer live. Is it recording still or not? It's recording. It's not live. Okay. Um, yeah, we're no longer going live as of today. So this service will be posted next week. So it'll upload to YouTube. It'll go live next Sunday and on Facebook and YouTube next week. So we're always going to be a week behind. So if you're not here and you're watching online from now on, it'll be a week behind. Okay, so right now, if you're at home watching this, they're not watching me, but they're watching the Sunrise Service. So they're probably confused at the moment. <laughs> but, um, they should have came to church, right? <laughs> so people are really chasing after Christ. They, they really want to know, man, and, and they really want to start to plug in more. They, they want to know how. So we're going to take, some, take a look at some practical stuff. Practical steps on how to actually do this. And that's what we're going to look at over the next couple of weeks. And then last night, of course, was this powerful night, this rocket church that we planned back in January that if we knew it was going to be 77 degrees, we would have done it outdoors at the skate park. It would have looked a little bit different. And we wouldn't have had to worry about keeping the numbers around 100, 125. And it, God worked it out perfectly. I think filled every seat that we could um, possibly fill. So it was an amazing night. But and, and good things happen. Again, I talked to more people. And more people that I knew and didn't know were all saying the same thing. I feel like God is stirring. I feel like God's stirring in me. I feel like God's stirring in the church, stirring in the North Country. There's, there's something for us. And I really believe there is something here for the North Country. I believe there is something for this church. There's something going on. Um, I think this North Country Music Fest is going to be amazing. We have so many good things coming up. Um, I just really believe that God has something for each and every one of us. So before we dig into the Word, let's, let's go to the Lord in, in prayer, and then we'll, uh, then we'll get into the message. Father, Father, I'm just so grateful to be here this morning with this family. Father, I'm so grateful for unanswered prayers, and I'm grateful for answered prayers. Father, I'm so thankful for each and every person that's here this morning. I know you have something amazing for us this morning. I pray that I don't get in the way. I pray that I don't mess this up. Father, I pray that your words land in the hearts of this family this morning. 
Father, I, I pray that those who are here this morning that need encouragement, I pray they get it. And I pray that those that need to be challenged are. Father, I pray that those who need to come back to you, that need to turn away from something, I pray that they do. And Father, I pray that those who admit that they're just fooling around with this, that they're just kind of on the fence, I pray that they want to be all in. They open their hearts to you. I pray that they allow your word to become real to them, to all of us today. Father, I pray that those who are chasing hard after you will be empowered and emboldened to seek you like they never had before. And then openly tell others about you in ways that just become natural to them, second nature. Father, I pray that we, we all understand and realize that we are given today, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So we need to take action today. Father, I pray that you stir the Holy Spirit that resides inside of every Christian. I pray that you stir that spirit and allow us to listen to it, allow us to guide us and make decisions for us. Father, I pray that we can all join together as a family, as the light shine bright into this community, the North Country and beyond. We do this all for you. Father, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. So last week, Easter Sunday, we kind of ended it, or towards the end anyways, we ended it with um, a very familiar scripture, the Great Commission. I'm going to read it again this morning to start us off. Uh, Matthew 28, 19 says, this is Jesus speaking just before he ascends into heaven. We read it last week. Therefore go, listen with fresh ears, this is really important, a little twist to it this morning. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. Let's end there. This, this is part of God's plan for each and every person here this morning. Not a suggestion. This is a great commission. You're on a mission. He's giving us this. Jesus says, you, Christian, follower, this is your plan. This is my plan for you. I'm sending you out. Therefore, go and make disciples. We don't often talk about that. Make disciples. We're going to get to that today. Teach others what I taught you. Teach others what I commanded you. What I commanded you. Tell other people about that. It's important. Share the good news with the nation, with your corner of the world. We've talked a good deal about this scripture. We're going to talk a lot about it in the future as well. Why? It's important. We can all share with others what we're learning, what we know, our faith story. And that's the cool thing that we're called to go and share this stuff. We don't have to worry about what happens to it after that. God calls us to do this. Be obedient. Don't worry about, oh, I keep sharing with this guy and it doesn't seem to be catching on. This guy still is doing these things. It's okay. We're taught to, to go and teach others what I've commanded you. Teach others what I've taught you. Don't worry about the result, okay? God will worry about the result. We worry about being obedient. Plant the seed, water the seed. That's what we're called to do. God makes seeds grow, not us. We can't do that. We can be diligent. We can continue to plant seeds and water. And we all have these different gifts. We all have different talents. We've talked a lot about this as well. But we all have different personalities too. Some of us are pretty outgoing. Some of us can just very naturally relate your personal faith with somebody in your life. You can just do that pretty naturally. You're outgoing. You can draw up a conversation with anyone. Other people are more introverted. They're more... Um, pretty shy. They don't really like to even start a conversation about anything, let alone Jesus. But God can use all of us to reach out to others. And it doesn't matter what your personality is, but you might be the exact person at the exact point in time, in the exact place, to reach the exact person that God wants you to reach. You see, God draws the people and he draws the people to himself. And his plan is that we share what we learn with the people. God may very well be drawing people in front of you. God may be very well drawing, um, crossing your path with someone who he's drawing to him. 
We live in a day and age where people are searching for truth. They're searching for answers. They're searching for something real. In a world that seems to be going crazy, people want something solid, a foundation to stand on truth. We got it. And God's drawing those people to us. I believe it. God's making these connections, these opportunities for our paths to cross people who need to know about Him, need to hear the truth. And God can use anyone to reach someone. God can use you. And I hear this a lot. I heard it last night. I heard it last week. Not me. I don't have that kind of personality. I'm very quiet. I'm very timid. That's what I hear. And I hear people say, not me. If you knew who I was, if you knew the stuff I've done, if you knew my family, you would know God doesn't want to use me. can't use me. Okay, for you, we, we turn to the Bible. Let's just take a really quick look at one very imperfect person, Paul. His name was Saul at the time, one of the biggest Christian haters of all time. Saul hunted down Christians, hated them. Wanted to put him in jail, wanted to kill him. Until what happened? We know the story. Saul was going down hunting Christians and he, he runs into the truth. He runs into Jesus. Bam! Remember what we said last week about truth. When you read the scripture, when you peel back the layers, when you actually see the truth, when you actually get it, and you have, aha, oh, that is, that is true. What I just read is pretty amazing, and I believe it's true. When we read that, you can allow the truth to change you, or you can try to change the truth. That's what we talked about last week. Sometimes we want to train, change the truth because it, it would have to, it doesn't fit to our lives. Okay, if I believe that's true, something in my life has to go or change. We can't allow it to happen like that. We have to be like Saul, become Paul. We have to allow the truth to make changes in our lives. You may have lived one way for 50 years. You might have been living a lie, living on what the world tells you. And then you read something different. And here's the word of God. And it's his truth. And you read it. And you say, wow. Father, I'm sorry for living this way. That's where Paul was. That's where Saul was before he became Paul. Saul allowed the truth to change him. Change his name from Saul to Paul. Changed his outlook at life. The truth, Jesus, changed Saul's outlook at Christians. Changed his outlook at God. Truth changed everything about Paul. Turned him around, 180. He ends up writing two-thirds of the New, the New Testament, inspired by the Holy Spirit, inspired by God's Word. He ends up traveling the countryside, teaching and preaching. Probably the top evangelist of all time, maybe second to Jesus. He's imprisoned, he's beaten, he's flogged, eventually beheaded for trying to share the truth. Why did he do all this? Why did Paul go through all that? There was times where Paul was beaten. He was taken out to the edge of the village and left for dead. And he would get up and he would say, let's go back. He'd go back in. Why did he do this? Because he met Jesus. And he found the truth. Paul found something real. He found an eternity that was worth living for today. And he wants others to know about it. In Romans 1.16, Paul was speaking to this hostile crowd. And he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Let me read that again. If you have it in front of you, read it. Look at it. Just get what it's saying. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it, the gospel, is the power of God. What's the power of God? The gospel. That's what this says. The power of God for what? For salvation. For who? For everyone who believes. That's a powerful sentence. That's not man's gospel. That's not a denomination's gospel. That's not some religion's gospel. That's God's gospel, it says. It's God's plan. It's the power of God. It's the power of salvation. It's God's plan and power to rescue you from death. All of us. Everyone, it says. To save you. To save your family. To save your friends. To save everyone in your corner of the world. Where you're supposed to go. Paul says, I know this is true because it happened to me. That's what Paul is saying. It happened to me. It changed me. That's what you can say. It's the power of God. It changed me. It can change you too. That's what we're supposed to
supposed to share. Paul says, I know this is true. And you can say the same thing with the same boldness. Here's the good news. Here's what it did for me. Here's what it can do for you. That's what you got to tell people. It's the power of God. Paul became an ambassador for God. An ambassador for Jesus Christ. And you can do the same thing. And share the power of God for the same reasons. Let's read this. 2 Corinthians 5.18. This is Paul speaking to Christians in this young church in Corinth. And he says this. 2 Corinthians 5.18. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, is he has committed us to the message of reconciliation. Verse 20, this is important. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him, in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. Let's end there. Paul says, we, you, me, Christians, us, we, you, are Christ's ambassador. Think about that for a minute. You're his ambassador. But what exactly is an ambassador? An ambassador, according to the dictionary, is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. And there's a second definition that says an ambassador is a person who acts as a representative or promoter of a specified activity. That's what you are. You're an ambassador. You're a representative of God to a different country, to a different world. We are here to represent and promote a specified activity. Jesus. Here in the United States, in the USA, right now, um, we have 178 different ambassadors to 178 different nations. Okay, These ambassadors to the different nations, they attempt to represent the United States to these 178 different nations. So they are in, this is a person sent to these countries as an ambassador to show them about the United States, to be that representative. This is what the United States stands for. This is what we believe. Huge responsibility for these guys. Paul says, you and I, we, Christians, we're Christ's ambassadors, and we are to represent him to the world. You know, when you think about that, it's a huge, awesome responsibility. God chose you, though, to make his appeal through you. God wants to share his message to the world through you. That's what Paul is saying here. This is a big deal. And there's, there's four main things we can draw out of these scriptures about being an ambassador. Okay, four main things. You might think, well, what is an ambassador really? There's four main parts to it. And they're simple parts, but they're important. And I really want to point them out. Because when you know these four, these four points of what an ambassador is, what it entails, it'll help you be one. So there's four main parts. If you're a Christian here this morning, this is for you. If you're not a Christian, okay, what, what Jesus did for Paul, he can do for you. And you can be an ambassador also. Everyone in here can be an ambassador. So here's four things about being Christ's ambassadors. First, you're chosen by God. What the scripture says, it doesn't matter how you think or how you feel right now, you might be thinking, not me. I've got this really unique personality. Um, I'm not ready for this. I'm not smart enough. I don't know enough. No. Nope. Scripture says that God chose you to be Christ's ambassador. You're chosen by God. doesn't matter what you think. doesn't matter what you feel. Okay? God, God chose you because he feels that you're the right person right now to be an ambassador where he has you planted. He put you there. Nobody else is where you are. Think about your own life. No one is where you are except you. Okay, in your school, in your hospital, on your sports team, in your family. He put you in that place at this time for a reason. And you're the only one that's there. You're the Christian that's there to represent him to that group of people. God's chosen you for a reason. And it's not just to work with these people. It's not just to play with these people and just have a 
you know, good old time, have some fun with them. That's not why you're there. God put you there for a reason, for a purpose, to represent Him. Just think about what is eternal. What's going to, after you leave this situation that you're in, your family, your job, your school, when you leave that place, what are the people around you going to remember about you? How did you impact them? He knew a lot of jokes that'll last, you know, a few weeks and then they'll forget that. You know, what is eternal? What are you leaving behind? What are you impressing upon these people? It's what you share about God. It's what you share about your faith. It's how they see you living out in your life. That's what's going to impact them. That's what they're going to remember. The folks around you are going to see the way you act. They're going to see the way you live. Because the truths that you share impact them. Change them. To a degree. Probably more than you realize. God said, I chose you to be my ambassador. God says, I believe that you're the best person in that place to represent me at this point in time. So the first thing, God chose you. The second thing about being an ambassador is that <clears throat> you're here to represent God. You're his representative, okay? He chose you to represent him, not you. He didn't choose you to go into that school or into that work setting or into that family and then share your opinions and your beliefs and your feelings with them, okay? To a degree, all those things are fine, but what are you there for? To represent God and His truth, the gospel. That's the power of God. That's why you're there. God chose you to represent Him. Not yourself, not your opinions, not your theories. 1 Corinthians 5.18 all this is from God. We read this already. I want to stress it again. 2 Corinthians 5.18. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, so we are to represent the gospel. Okay, that you can be reconciled to God through Jesus. You can be brought back to God. Everyone. Okay, so in that place that God has put you, there's people who feel they're very unworthy of ever walking through the door of a church. They feel they're very unworthy of God. But we know they're not. They can be reconciled to God just like Paul was, just like you and I were. We need to let people know that. Our relationship with God can be restored with Jesus, through Jesus, and through Jesus only is what the scripture says. That's what we share. We don't water it down and say, just be really good and you can go back to God. The scripture doesn't say that. Through Jesus. That's the message. That's the message that we're supposed to share. And you might be thinking, well, I don't really know a lot of the stuff. I don't, right now, okay, I'm in this place. I see these people that really are craving. I see that they're craving. They're looking for something. But what do I tell them? I'm not sure. Tell them the Christmas story. God so loved the world that he gave his one only son. Whoever believes. Tell them that. Tell them the Christmas story. Why Jesus came to earth. Share that with them. Share the Easter story with them. Okay, tell them that Jesus came and he lived. And he died for you. And he rose. Tell them that. Tell them the truth. Allow the truth to change us so we can share it. God chose you to be his representative. That's his plan for you. And far too often, this is where a lot of folks take the wrong turn. Okay, we, we get the Christmas story. We get the Easter story. We get some of the other stories. And then we start to think, okay, this is where uh, we go back. and We don't find a way to plug in maybe or we don't have that boldness or that courage to talk to people about what's going on inside of us and we just kind of leave it go. And we talk about the weather instead. And instead of like digging into the Word and continuing our training and reading and studying and coming to church and being around other Christians and allowing people to sharpen us and, and mold us to be more Christ-like, okay, too often we, we let this drop off our priority list and we allow, okay, we leave here, we step out of the church, we step back into the world. And now all of a sudden, a hundred other things fill in that blank where Jesus should be. And we allow the world to fill in the blank. We all have things that we fill in these blanks with that just keep pushing Jesus further down. And then when we are in that spot, a representative, we no longer have the, the strength and the courage and the boldness to share our faith with people. It's what often happens. It's God's plan. It's not our plan. God's plan is eternal. We need to keep it fresh. We need to continue this training. Okay, God's plans are, are good forever. When God, God has this message that will last for eternity, 
God says, I've chosen you to, to share with these people in your life. I've chosen you to represent me through your own words, through your own actions, through your life. You're to represent me. God says, I'm making this appeal through you. And that brings us to the third point about being an ambassador. You're doing this under God's authority. Okay, God chose you to represent him, and you're doing it under his authority. This makes a huge difference. Why? Because you're on a mission from God, okay? Like Paul, we can be bold because we know it's God telling us to do this. Jesus sent us on this great commission. He told us to go, step out. It's God's plan. It's not ours. It doesn't matter what other people think. It's not my idea. It's not my plan. It's God's. God sent me to do this. God sent me on this mission, on this plan. In the Great Commission, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. He's giving us that authority. He has all authority in heaven and earth, the scripture says. He's given you that authority. Go. You go do this. You've got my authority. I'm telling you to do it. You're given his plan, this job, this mission by God. Go do this. Let's step back real quick and think about authority. Okay, think about if you're driving down the road and you see the blue and red flash of lights in the rear view mirror. Unless you don't have a rear view mirror in your car, then you'll miss it. It's a story. But when we see the when we see those lights in our rear view mirror, what does that do to us? Okay, it sends fear to us. It's like, oh, I was speeding. What do we do when you see those lights? You pull over. Why do we pull over? Because he has authority. Because police officers have the authority. When you see the lights, you pull over. That's what you're supposed to do. You pull over. Okay. Why, why do they have that authority? Because they, police officers, represent the government. They're representing the laws. So we see those lights in the rearview mirror. That tells us they have the authority to pull us over, to pull over. Okay? If I pull up behind someone and start flashing my lights, you think they're going to pull over? Probably not. Okay, they're probably not going to do much of anything. Other than maybe try to get away from me thinking I'm crazy or something. But if you, you don't have the authority. That's why they don't pull over. How about a teacher in, in your children's class or when you were in school. When the teacher says, sit down and be quiet, what do you do? You sit down and you be quiet. You should. You're supposed to respect that authority. So you sit down and you be quiet. Why? Because that teacher has authority over you. Who gave them that authority? The school board hired them. Who gives the school board authority? We do. Taxpayers, parents, the voters. That's how authority works. We Christians, we're not under our own authority. That gives us power. That should give us boldness. Okay? We're under God's authority. He chose you to be his ambassador. You're under his authority. You're working for God. Think back to the Blues Brothers movement. We're on a mission from God. Okay, when, when somebody says, what gives you the right to say that? Okay, you'll get this a lot. What gives you the right to say that? <laughs> this. This is what I believe. This is what sent me. This is what I'm basing my life on. What are you basing yours on? So I, I tell people that a lot. Not in an arrogant way, but in a, this is real. Are you basing your life on feelings and desires? You know, good luck with that. They're going to change before we leave this room. God and his word is who I represent. His truth, his righteousness. This is the final authority on, on everything. Every issue in our life, we talked about it last night. This is the final authority. Relationships, money, everything. That's the truth. That's who we represent, the truth, God's word. So we step back for just a moment. This, this happens to a lot of people also. We think, okay, there is somebody in my life that I really want to invite to church. I really feel like the Holy Spirit's been nudging me, been putting on my heart, putting this person on my mind. I really want to invite this person to, to church, to the Rock, to, you know, some event like Rock the Church like last night. Or I really want to invite them on a trip maybe. I want to bring them to church. Okay. Maybe God has crossed your path with somebody at work or at school or at the store. You see the same person over and over. And, and you want to, you know you want to invite them or you know you want to share your faith story with them. You know you want to say something to them about Jesus, about your faith, about God, about just coming in and, and seeing what I, I've learned. But we don't because we're afraid of what they're going to say. We're afraid of getting laughed at. We're afraid of being called a name. We're afraid of how they're going to react so we don't. We're going to spend a lot of time in this part next week, but um, that happens to us a lot. We just feel like if I really say what's on my heart, they're going to say something back to me. It's not going to go well, so maybe I'll just talk about the weather this time. 
and say how nice it is outside and we'll just move on from there. Um, I have a really good friend that's done ministry for a long time. He's a, a lead pastor. This guy is rock solid. He's one of my mentors. Um, he still does this. Here's his trick. I'll let you in on his trick. When he goes out and does ministry, okay, he just pretends that Jesus is standing, the physical Jesus is standing right next to him. Okay, we all know as Christians the Holy Spirit resides inside of us, inside of a believer. Okay, but when he goes and tries to do ministry, try to share his faith with someone, he just pictures Jesus standing right next to him. And think about that. There's that person that God put on your heart to share your faith with, to invite to church, to invite to an event, just to say something about Jesus too. You feel it on your heart. God's nudging you to do this. Just imagine if Jesus is standing here. And this will help him. That Jesus is standing there and you look at him and you just say, Jesus, do you want to take this one? And he says, you got it. It's your brother. He's your coworker. He's your teammate. Talk to him. Just invite him. He gives you that boldness. He's standing right there. And that's how we have to look at it. He is really right there next to you. He's inside of you. He's chose you. To represent him. You have his full authority. He sent you here. Do it. Just do what you feel. Do the nudge. Carry it out. That gives us the strength. All the time. That Jesus is with me. I have his authority. This gives us the boldness. Don't listen to the other voices. Don't talk about the weather. Don't wait for another day. Do it now. And that brings us to the fourth point about being an ambassador. You're an ambassador all the time. It's not a part-time job. You do this all the time. You carry it out all the time. You're always on duty. Everything you say, everything you do matters. You're his ambassador when you're with a large group of people at a party, big family gathering, at school, at work. You're his ambassador right then. You're his ambassador with what you're saying, what you're doing, your attitude, how you present yourself to people. When you're at work, you're his ambassador. When you're at school, you're his, his ambassador. Every situation, every time. When you're on the sidelines of a sporting event and you're like yelling out at a ref, you're Christ's ambassador right there. When you're, when you're sitting there waiting for a parking spot and you've been sitting waiting for some guy to load up his bags and pull out and some car whips in there in front of you, you're Christ's ambassador right then. You're still his ambassador. Good times and bad. You're always on duty. You're on duty when you're alone in a car or a room with a boyfriend or girlfriend. You're on duty. You're still his representative. We're not called to be part-time Christians. We can't pick and choose the time and place that we're going to represent God. As Christians, we are always representing God. You never know when and how God is using you in a, any situation, any, any given day. You don't know. You're always on. Your words, your actions, your attitudes, folks are watching you. So the four things, God chose you to represent him. And you have his full authority. And you're always representing him. And you might be thinking, man, Pastor, this is actually kind of intimidating if I take this seriously. If I think about this, it's kind of intimidating. I just came here to listen to Meredith and, and Heather and Undefeated. I didn't know I was going to get all this. How am I going to carry this out? How can I be an ambassador all the time? I can't yell into the rest. There's many ways that we can carry this out. Next week we're going to talk about some really practical steps that every one of us can carry out. But for this morning I had just three real quick ones that I want to share with us. Three real quick ways that will help us to be an ambassador. Okay, the first thing, just keep on training. you got to stay in the Word. Okay, so you're saying read the, read the Bible. Yeah, again, here we go. you got to stay in the Word. you got to continue the training. Okay, you can't let down. you got to keep coming to church. you got to stay connected. you got to make this a priority. No other thing in that blank can be above this. This has to be first in your life to be an ambassador all the time. It, it's not easy. It takes training. Holy Spirit inside you. Remember that. Jesus is right there saying, you got this one. Let's do this one. Second, what do we do? Well, let's take a look at Paul. What did Paul do? Paul said, pray for me, is what he told the church. Okay, we can pray for each other. Prayer is huge. It's not just saying read your Bible and pray. Exactly. Um, there's a way to pray, though. Think about this. This is the way that Paul prayed. Paul says, pray for each other. He says, pray for me. Let's read it. Ephesians 6, 19. This is Paul speaking. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, 
Words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make them known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And then we can look at another example. We can pray like the apostles prayed. This is important. Acts 4.29. This is the apostles praying. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Let's take a look at those two scriptures. Ephesians 6 that I just read. Paul was speaking from prison. Why is he in prison? Because he was just speaking boldly about the gospel. He got thrown in prison for that. He's in danger. They could choose any day to have him killed. That's what he's facing. In Acts 4.29, Peter and John, they were captured. Why? For speaking the gospel. They were captured and released until a proper punishment could be found. They're in danger. Why? For sharing the truth. What did those guys all pray for? Did they pray for safety? Did they pray for protection? Did they pray for a way out of there? No. There's nothing wrong with praying for those things. But that's not what Paul and Peter and John prayed for. What did they pray for? Boldness. Allow me to speak the truth even stronger. They prayed that they would become fearless ambassadors is what the scripture says. That shows their heart. It shows their desire. I'm on this mission and nothing's going to stop me. You can take me and beat me, whip me, do whatever you want, throw me in prison. I'm just going to become bolder. Okay? The more you come at me, the more bold I'm going to become. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is living inside of me. The more I get put down, the more I'm going to stand on Him. The more I'm going to rely on Him. These guys, they're, they're sharing truth. Trouble comes, they don't shrink back. They don't say, oh, God, protect me. Take me away from this. Keep me safe. They say, God, help me become more bold. Help me to stand up for you. Help me to keep going. And please know here, boldness does not mean obnoxiousness, okay? Being bold is not taking a megaphone or a blowhorn. We talked about this a couple weeks ago some people. It's not taking a megaphone or a blowhorn and screaming in somebody's face, you're going to hell! Okay, I was walking to the outpost in non Apollo Christian nightclub that we ran for a while. We are walking through downtown and me and a couple people that were going to open up the outpost and just some stranger came up to us with a bull bullhorn, whatever you call him, and he just like yelled in our face, you're going to hell, and he breaks into this big long thing, it's like, dude, you don't even know who we are, <laughs> it's like, I'm a Christian, and you just turned me off, like, whatever you have, I don't want anything to do with it, and if I was not a Christian, that's how I would respond, I don't know about you, but if someone gets in your face and starts screaming at you, hitting you over the head of the Bible, telling you that you're going to hell, just, that's the way you're going to approach somebody, you, you, you put a wedge between a non-believer in, in Christ. You're not reflecting Christ to them. Is that how Christ would approach someone? No. If that's, if that's your attitude, I, I uh, pray that you go back and read the Beatitudes. We've studied the Beatitudes here, okay? Um, we have to share the truth in love. We have to share the truth in meekness. We have to be humble. We have to figure out loving, caring ways to share the truth. It's what Jesus said. It's what he taught but we can be bold enough to know who we are, Christ's ambassadors, who sent us, God. We're representing Him. Then we're on a mission for Him. That makes us pretty bold, and He's with us. Okay, so the third way, quickly, that we can um, actually become an ambassador is to do what Jesus asked us to do. Do it. Go. Okay, it's, it's pretty hard to just sit in your chair and click in your hand and carry out the Great Commission. He says, go, do this. Get out there. Interact with people. Talk with people. The people in your corner of the world, talk to them. That's why you're there. That's what Paul did. Paul gives us another great example. 1 Corinthians 9, 19. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone. Why? To win as many as possible, the scripture says. We're working for everyone, whether you like people or not. You're working for those people in your corner of the world. What do you mean working for them? I'm working to share the good news with them. God's power with them. Acts 5.42, day after day, in the temple courts, and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and praying the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Acts 8.4, those who had been scattered preached the word everywhere they went. Okay, these guys, they never stopped. They always stayed focused on Christ. They always stayed focused on their mission. 
And then Paul gives us some more great instruction. 1 Corinthians 9, 22. I have become all things to all people so that some might be saved. We're going to talk a lot more about that scripture next week. That one scripture, I become all things to all people so that some might be saved. That's going to be a powerful scripture next week. Because there's so many ways that we can reach people. We're going to dig into this verse next week and take a look at some practical ways to carry out God's plan through that one verse. And then next week, we're also going to take a look at Jesus and the various examples that he gives us on how to be an ambassador. How did he do it? That's how I want to do it. That's what we're going to look at next week. But for this morning, let's end it this way. As a Christian, you got to be very clear. you got to get this. That God has placed his power in your life. What's the power? The gospel. That's what the scripture says. And his power is from God. And the power is for God. It's for Him. It applies to all of us. But it's from Him and it's for Him. I want to do something I've never tried to do here before, but I really want to try this just for the fun of it. Looks like you guys need to move around a little bit anyways. I want everyone to try to move one space away from whoever's next to you. So just move like an arm's length away. You physically have to move. And if there's not room, get up and move to an empty seat. Move to an empty pew somewhere. I want you a good arm's length away from everybody else. Nothing to do with COVID, nothing like that. I didn't know it was going to be this hard, but you're doing good. As spread out as this looks right now, okay, Imagine if you were to invite one person to church next week. This is how full it would be. If everyone brought one person, this is the power of one. This is the power of you sharing the gospel with one person. This is how full this church would be. About me, we'd have four people. <laughs> but then the week after that, we'd be full. But think about it. This is the power of one. If we all just invested into one person, this is how full it would be. Almost as full as last night, right? But I think you get it. I think you understand. We're not talking about filling seats because we never talk about filling seats. We talk about filling hearts. But that power of one, you're investing in one person's life. Of course you can invest in two or five or ten. But just one is where it starts. You invest in one person's life and this church would look vastly different. We would have all kinds of different gifts here that we could use to do ministry, that we could share with other people, people that we can help while they're here. We could fill hearts of that one person. So that one person you invest your time in, you invest your effort in, you might just start by this saying, I'm praying for you. And I've had people say this to me, don't pray for me, I don't want you praying for me. I'm praying for you. Don't pray for me. <laughs> that happened. I've had people get really mad at me because I said, I'm praying for you. And I just continued to say, I'm praying for you. And then I prayed for them. But that's how it starts. Just say, I'm praying for you. Just know that I'm praying for you. And they'll be like, why are you praying for me? Doors open. Now you can start sharing. So you invest in one person. We can change a church. We can change a community. It's not about filling the seats. It's about filling those hearts. Just share the love of Christ with one person through your actions, through your words, through your time, through your effort, through your love. The Great Commission says, go make disciples. That's what we just did, right? What's a disciple? When you're a disciple, that's daily choosing to follow Jesus. That's what a disciple is. And to make a disciple, what do you do? You daily choose to follow Jesus, and then you compel others to do the same thing. Now you're making disciples. Yeah, you can move back to your seats and sit down if you want to. Or you continue to stand as a Christian, you are Christ's ambassador. Okay, God chose you to represent him under his authority and to do it all the time. So who's that one person that right now is coming to your mind? God's putting on your heart, putting on your mind this one person. Maybe it's more than one, but think about that one person. Who is it? Who's that one person? All you need to do is somehow reflect the love of Christ too. Who's that one person that, that you can share with, that you can fill that empty spot that's in his heart because you had the same empty spot? I got one question and then we're done. 
If God loved the world so much, and if God loved you so much, and he does, and if God loved you so much that he sent his one and only son to die in your place, which he did, so that you could have a way back to him, then why does God leave you here? You ever think about that? If, if God wants to spend an eternity with us in heaven, why did he leave us here? He loved you so much, he sent his son to die in your place so that you would have a way back to him. You reconciled him, brought back to him. Why, why are we still here? Why did he leave us? In this, this world that seems to be falling apart, this world where they're legalizing sin and normalizing sin, and we're supposed to swallow it and, and say that that's okay. Why would he leave us in a place like this? Because you got a mission. You got that one that needs to know about Jesus. You got that one person who, who doesn't have Christ in his life and he needs it. And you have it. You have the power of God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you need to share it with at least that one that's in your life. And think about this at some point in time, it might have been a couple of months ago. For you, it might have been a year, it might have been 10 years, it might have been 55 years ago. That somebody had a spot in their life. They were put in the perfect place at the perfect point in time to reach you. You were their one. What if that person that reached you decided to say, Oh, it's a beautiful day out, isn't it? A lot of rain this week. God, not able to do this. What if that one person that reached you said no to God? I can't do this. Where would you be today? Let's pray, Father. Father, I just thank you for all you do for us. Father, you give us this amazing responsibility. Father, we know that you know that we can do it, or you wouldn't have given it to us. Father, we know that all we have to do is, is look to you and ask you and pray to you. Just do what the apostles did. Just pray for boldness, pray for strength. Understand that as a Christian, you're living inside of us. Father, help each and every person here to remember that you chose us to represent you. We have your full authority, your back, and your power. And help us to do this all the time. And Father, we thank you so much that you put us in the perfect place at the first perfect time to reach that one person in our job, in our school, on our team, in our family, whatever it is. That we're that one person that can reach that one person. Father, give us the boldness, give us the courage not to shrink away from that. Father, give us the strength to not turn from this mission, from the great commission that you sent us on. Father, help us to enjoy this journey. Help us to enjoy this mission. Help us to pray for each other, to train in your word, to train in the word of God. To understand that all we read, all we learn, all we're doing here is for you. Everything we do is for you. Help us to do it all the time. Help us to reach that one with your power, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you.